Now that we've run our analysis, we can review our analysis results. We can review many results on screen, including the code stress and stress ratio results, displacements, forces and moments, support and restraint forces, mode shapes, and pipe soil interface forces and deformations for buried piping. In our output report, there is an equipment subreport that creates a section that lists the rotating equipment nozzle loadings and code acceptance criteria for each active load case. The output will show the details for the reaction loads and it will give a star whenever a certain reaction exceeds the API 610 allowable. What's important to remember is that the auto pipe pump report shows all the reaction forces and moments in terms of the local API 610 axis when we have our equipment defined as a pump. In this axis, the Z is the vertical axis and the X is the shaft axis. The transformation from global to local axis is defined at the top of the pump report. So for example, the moment MZ actually stands for the global Y moment MY in Autopipe, since in our model, Y is the vertical axis. There will also be an equipment summary report at the end of all of the individual equipment reports. We defined our second pump using reference points. So there is also a reference point subreport option that lists the reference point loads, both the actual and allowable loads for our reference points that are defined in our piping system. This report contains the results only for the reference points that have the report actual loads option checked on. For each reference point, the tag number is printed on the first line and the reference ID, reference side, point name, segment name, coordinate system, and load direction are printed on the second line. For non-zero allowable loads that are inputted by the user, as in our model, the absolute value of the ratio of the actual load over the allowable load is reported. A star will be shown beside each ratio greater than one. To make it easier to scan the report, the word fail will be printed on the right margin of the report on the rows in which the force ratio is greater than one or the moment ratio is greater than one. If the report allowable loads option is checked on and the allowable load was not specified for the reference point, none will be printed in the allowable column and blank will be shown in the ratio column for all of the load combinations. On the other hand, if the report allowable loads option is unchecked, only the actual load will be printed for all of the load combinations and a blank will be shown in the allowable and ratio columns. In our piping model, we can review the code stress results by clicking on our results ribbon and our code stress button. We'll review the ratio of our actual stresses compared to the allowable stresses and we'll look at an envelope of all of our combinations. Autopipe automatically brings us to the point of highest stress, which in our model is point A20. It will show the ratio in red on the plot. The dialog box will also match the point that's selected on the plot with more detailed information. So we see our maximum stress ratio is 0.93, and it's occurring at point A20. If we look at the top left of our plot, we can see that this is occurring in the expansion case. You can also review your displacement, restraint, support, and force and moment results for this model on the screen. We can also review our results in our results grid, where we have a grid for our displacements, our forces and moments, our anchor results, support results, and code stress results. There's options to filter on the right, and you can print or save this to Microsoft Access Database. Once done reviewing the grid, you can close out. For our piping model, we're interested in looking at our equipment results and our reference load results. So we will do this by looking at our output report. We're interested in only looking at those in this case because we already reviewed our code stress on the screen. Of course, we'd be interested in also looking at our support results and our displacement results. But for the time being, let's take a look at our equipment loads. So we can use the select unselect all reports option to check everything on and then check all of our sub reports off. And I'm only going to check on the equipment sub report and the reference load sub report. And we can accept this by clicking OK. We see our output report pops up with our auto pipe program information and our piping model information. 
We can then scroll down. We see our first equipment report, which is for our pump one in our gravity load case. We see all of our inputs for this pump, and then we see our results. So our forces and moments, both the actual and allowable, and our suction side and our discharge side. Autopipe will also show the calculations that it runs through from API 610, and also the calculation that it runs through for the pump center. If we scroll down further, we can see our pump one report for our gravity temperature pressure load case, all of our inputs here, and then our forces and moments. And in this case, we see some stars and the word fail because we are getting ratios that are too high. As we scroll down, we see our pump center calculations. And again, we are getting the word fail uh, because our ratios are higher than the allowable. So that's for our first pump between points B25 and C00 that we actually input as rotating equipment. As we scroll down, we see our equipment summary report, which will tell us that we have load combinations failing the code checks with the highest fail ratio case being the gravity temperature pressure case. The second pump that we defined between points D25 and C00, we used our reference points for. And if we scroll to the bottom, we see our reference point load report. This will show the results for both the gravity case and gravity temperature pressure case for our forces and moments at both points D25 and E00, representing our suction point and our discharge point. So here we also see some stars and the word fail, showing that we are again overstressing these connections here. Both reports show a very high ratio around seven. Remember that the equipment report above is based on the API 610 axis, so it's important to look at that transformation. The reference point report shown here is based on the user inputted allowable loads. So those would be from a manufacturer. When done reviewing this report, we can close out. Let's view default and save the model. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.